Okay, here we are finally at post-trib moment number 60. Uh, <clears throat> put in a lot of time refuting these idiotic videos, and not one of them has proved that the pre-trib rapture is a lie. Not one. Every single one has been refuted. He, he has no argument. None. What Steve Anderson is, he is a non-dispensational workman that needs to be ashamed. He does not rightly divide the word of truth. That's why he makes a mess of scripture. But let's watch here. And hear the other one. Another another and final lie. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 is a passage that really just demolishes this idea of a secret rapture. Those who believe in the pre-trib rapture believe that he will secretly come in the clouds. No one will see him. He will not be revealed to this earth. He will not come in power and great glory as it says in Matthew 24 but that he will just secretly come in the clouds. No one will hear the trumpet except us. We will disappear. And everyone. Okay, first of all, he's already said a couple errors. No one will hear the trumpet. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Again, it's the trump of God. Trump is the voice of the trumpet, the sound that the trumpet makes. Revelation chapter Four. He hears a voice, which I heard was as if, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me. Okay, that's the rapture. And by the way, you say, what about the First Corinthians chapter fifteen? First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse fifty-one. The only other reference in Scripture to, excuse me, not uh, fifty-one, fifty-two is where it's at the trump. Okay. It's the trump of God, not an angel blowing the trumpet. All right. So again, he lied. It's just so incredible. And he says, "Well, it's it's uh it's it's not going to be a secret thing, you know, that Jesus comes secretly." Oh, really? Well, why don't we talk about verse 51, where he says, "I show you a mystery." In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, that's not the second coming. That's not Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke 17, Luke 21. This is something different. That's why Paul calls it a mystery. This has not been previously revealed. This is something completely different. The second coming, what, what that happens when the sun and moon are darkened and the stars fall from heaven, that does not happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And there is no trump associated with that passage again he is lying to people and we'll be wondering where is everybody no one will know what happened and so on and so forth uh, because they they ignore all the verses that say he cometh with clouds every eye shall see him no we don't ignore it we rightly divide it we show that those are second coming passages and rapture passages have to do with the body of christ being called out before the time of jacob's trouble and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him even so amen revelation 1 7 but listen to what second thessalonians chapter 1 says beginning in verse number 7 and to you who are troubled rest with us when the lord jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels okay let's look at this what's the rest here okay Here we have Paul, I'll just start from the beginning, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. Now look at this. So that we ourselves glory in you and the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Were they going through the great tribulation then? No. Tribulation in your Bible is a reference to something that the body of all members of the body of Christ has gone through. It's not a future time period. It's a description of what you go through. It is not a, not a name, a title for the coming seven year time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, that's the big boo-boo that Steve Anderson makes over and over and over again. But look what he's saying here. Your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. 
which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. If we suffer, we shall also reign with God. The kingdom of God is a reference both to the spiritual and to the physical. There are a few references where it does refer to the physical kingdom, the millennial kingdom of God. And if we suffer, we will reign. Okay? Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. What's this talking about? What's the passage here talking about? Paul is saying, yeah, the wicked are, are attacking you and things and doing bad things to you. But guess what? It's a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Those people back in the first century, they died and went to hell. But those people that are in the future, that actually enter the time of Jacob's trouble, they are going to have God's wrath poured out on them. Okay? And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Okay, what's this talking about? Oh, it's the rapture. No, it's not the rapture. This is when... The wrath of God, the righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them to trouble you. This is when the evil men are going to be put down. Right here, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, this right here is what their rest is in. Not the rapture. This is not the rapture. This, this has nothing to do with the rapture in this passage. This has everything to do with God paying back those evil people. Okay, you read in Revelation, it talks about... Revelation chapter 16, verse 19. Great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. God doesn't forget the evil that men have done to the body of Christ and he will recompense it some day he will punish the wicked all right and that's where the rest comes in that's where the joy comes in there this has nothing to do with the rapture the rapture is not in second Thessalonians chapter 1 so when is God going to give us rest from our troubles and tribulations that's not the interpretation of the passage it's when is God going to pay back the wicked people when is God going to recompense evil and righteous judgment on the wicked? That's what's going on there in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. He says, And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. So when do we get our rest from troubles? He said, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, and he keeps on going. No, your rest from the trouble thing there is saying that the, the wicked are finally paid back. The wicked are finally judged. The wicked are finally punished and destroyed from off the face of the earth. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. So right there we see that the same day that we get rest from our troubles is the same day... No, 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 no. You see a liar? Oh, it's the same day we get our rest from our troubles. No, 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 no. It's the same day that we see our enemies punished permanently, once and for all. They're finished. Okay? You see, the believers in Thessalonica died, and those same evil people that were persecuting them, their descendants, and people that followed their, you know, warped philosophies, persecuted Christians in the future. And it doesn't matter how much we do as Christians, there will always be people there to persecute us. Well, when's that going to end? That ends at the second coming. This has nothing to do with the rapture. Okay? Again, this, just, the guy is so ignorant of scripture. ...that he comes in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. The same day that he's revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, that's the same day that we receive rest, and it's the same day that he'll be glorified in his saints and admired in all them that believe. So you see, the day when the rapture takes place is the same... Uh, uh, see, the day when the rapture takes place is the same day when Jesus is revealed from heaven. See, he lied. It's the day when God takes care of the, the wicked, finally.
when his judgment and wrath is finally done on the wicked day that God begins to pour out his wrath. He removes us from this earth right before he pours out his wrath. So, nobody's going to be asking, where is everybody? Because they're going to see him revealed from heaven. No, they aren't. In a moment, the twinkling of an eye. They're not all going to see him. And there's going to be fire and brimstone raining upon them. They're probably going to be more worried about the fact that fire and brimstone There's going to be fire and brimstone Let me just... is raining upon them. And then shortly thereafter, with the first trumpet, the Bible tells that all green grass will be burned up on the whole earth. I mean, Okay, so we're going to have fire immediately after the second coming there, right? immediately after the rapture, excuse me, you know, according to this little nut. Matthew chapter 24. Okay, here we have the Lord coming back in here. And look down in here, you know, his fellow servants, the guy smiting his fellow servants and whatever. And what do we go to? We go to Matthew chapter 25, and we go down through. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Wait a second, I thought he was going to burn everything. Um, that doesn't make much sense. Before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. You mean Jesus is going to judge the earth after he comes back? I thought he was going to burn the earth. Uh, yeah. No, see, Steve Anderson doesn't know the Bible. And the whole earth is going to be scorched with fire and brimstone. Oh, really? The whole earth is going to be scorched with fire and brimstone? No, that's at the end of the millennium. He doesn't know his Bible. One third part of the trees will be burnt up. All green grass will be burnt up. Wait a second. All the world, look at that. I mean, this is so ridiculous. The first trumpet, the Bible tells that all green grass will be burned up on the whole earth. I mean, the whole earth is going to be scorched with fire and brimstone. The whole earth is going to be scorched with fire and brimstone. Now listen to what he says next. One third part of the trees will be burnt up. Well, wait a second. I thought the whole earth was going to be scorched. Then he says, one third of the trees. Huh? What? See, he's just blending all kinds of stuff together. The millennial kingdom, you know, at the end there where the fire comes down from heaven and burns up the earth. Oh, that, that happens, but it's just a third of the trees that get burnt. What? This guy is so ignorant of scripture. All green grass will be burnt up. Fire and brimstone raining from heaven. Is that what the Left Behind movie showed you? About the day when the Lord Jesus Christ comes to give us rest? About the day when the Lord... The Lord Jesus doesn't... See, he, he's, he's making things up out of Scripture. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 is about when the Lord comes and brings us rest. No, it is not. It is about when the Lord finally gets rid of our enemies. Finally pays back and punishes and gets revenge on our enemies. Jesus Christ comes to be admired in all them that believe. Is that what the, the, the Left Behind movie showed you? What it says in Luke 17, that the same day Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone, and that's how it's going to be in the day when the Lord Jesus Christ is revealed. Read Luke 17. Compare it to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. The secret rapture is a, is a hoax. No, it isn't. Your teaching is a hoax. And I'm going to show a couple other things in other videos, and I'm going to expose this little devil for who he is. He is a false prophet and a liar. And I have demonstrated that answering every single one of his stupid post-trib moment videos.